Hi everyone, this is Chloe and Jillian. Our senior design project is Endomagno, a magnetic endoscopic retriever for use in pediatric gastroenterology. In this presentation, we'll go through an overview of our medical device design. We will then discuss results for our magnetic endoscopic retriever and upper GI endoscopy testing platform. Finally, we'll discuss feature directions for our project. We'll start with the design overview and rationale for endomagno. Foreign objects that are swallowed can become lodged in the upper gastrointestinal or GI tract, which is made up of the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. To remove these objects, a gastroenterologist performs an upper GI endoscopy using an endoscope and various endoscope accessories, which is shown in the video. The endoscope is inserted through the upper GI tract with a camera on the end, that feeds into an external monitor so that the physician can see where the objects are stuck, as well as control and maneuver the location of the endoscope. The tip of the endoscope also has light guides, air and water jets, and an instrument channel where medical devices like forceps, baskets, or nets can be inserted to remove swallowed objects. In 2018, foreign bodies accounted for the fourth most common substance category reported to the American Association of Poison Control Centers for Pediatrics. Button batteries are also the seventh most likely substance that causes death in pediatric patients. In addition to blocking the esophagus, button batteries can cause burns, magnets can tear holes in the tissue due to attractive forces with other metallic objects, and sharp objects like pins or needles can scratch or puncture the upper GI tract. Commonly used endoscope accessories include nets and forceps to grab and enclose the object. However, metallic objects are often hard to grasp using current endoscopy devices. They may also be embedded in tissue or obscured by food. Furthermore, there are no commercially available magnetic devices for this purpose. Our goal at Endomagno is to help pediatric gastroenterologists by creating a more effective way to remove swallowed metallic objects, as well as developing a low-cost testing platform to evaluate endoscopic devices. We had several specifications in mind when we were creating Endomagno. First of all, we had to make sure that it would fit inside the instrument channel of an endoscope, so it had to be 8 feet long and less than 3 millimeters in diameter. That way it would fit in both an upper and lower endoscope. We then wanted to make sure that the handle would be comfortable in multiple positions so it could be easily used by different physicians. And thirdly, we wanted to make sure that the magnet was strong enough so that way it would hold objects without dropping them. This meant that it had to be 135 grams worth of pull force. We also wanted some way to be able to turn it on and off for repositioning purposes. Endomagno went through a few design iterations in order to get to our current design. We started with an electromagnet because that was easily able to be turned on and off, but we found that it overheated easily and was very temperamental. We then tried an on-off magnet that had a long wire connecting it to the end, but we found that the wire didn't transfer the magnetism very well, so it could only go a short distance. Thirdly, we tried our current design, which has a catch and release mechanism with permanent magnets in order to reposition. Now we will go into the results for Endomagno. Here you can see the final design of Endomagno, which fulfills all of the specifications that we recently reviewed. As you can see, it has an ergonomic handle, a long tube, and three 45 gram permanent neodymium magnets, which total 135 grams worth of pull force. This allows our device to interface with endoscopes that are currently used by physicians. Unlike currently available devices, Endomagno will use force from a local, axially directed magnetic field, allowing pediatric gastroenterologists and technicians to more efficiently remove metallic objects. Here we show the repositioning mechanism for Endomagno. Here we see that Endomagno is attached to a non optimal section of the paperclip. To remove the paperclip from Endomagno, we pull Endomagno up into the instrument channel of the endoscope. As endomagno reaches the lip of the instrument channel, we see that the paper clip is too big to fit through. Therefore, endomagno continues up the instrument channel, whereas the paper clip falls back down into the lumen of the tissue that we're extracting it from. We can then move the endoscope itself to reposition it to better align to where we'd like to grab the paper clip. Finally, we can lower endomagno back down the instrument channel to, to connect with the paper clip on the desired location. 
Endomagno is designed to remove commonly swallowed ferromagnetic objects such as button batteries, paper clips, screws, and magnets. We have characterized these objects and tested our device in conditions mimicking the upper GI tract to ensure that the endomagno can successfully remove these objects during an endoscopy. This video demonstration shows how endomagno can interface with endoscopes currently used by pediatric gastroenterologists. The controls on the endoscope allow for precise movement to maneuver the tip of the endoscope in the upper GI tract. Endomagno is inserted through the instrument channel and can be extended or retracted in the channel using the endoscope controls. In the next video, we see a button battery labeled with a green sticker lodged inside an upper GI model used by medical fellows during training on the endoscopy procedure. The tip of the endoscope with the instrument channel also has a camera that feeds into this external monitor. The tip of the endomagno is extended to attract the button battery. The endoscope is then pulled back out through the upper GI tract, and the endomagno successfully holds on to the button battery, allowing for extraction of the object. In this video demonstration, a button battery labeled with a pink sticker is inside the stomach portion of our 3D printed model. Here we show both the endoscope camera view and the outside view of the procedure. The endomagno is extended out from the instrument channel, and we can see that the button battery jumps right to the magnetic probe at the tip. So the axially directed magnetic pull force of 135 grams attracts and holds on to the button battery. The sphincters are modeled using a sponge in our testing platform to mimic their size constraints and deformability. As the endoscope is pulled back out, the endomagno successfully holds on to the button battery even as it moves through both of the sphincters for extraction from the upper GI tract. We tested the endomagno with commonly swallowed objects in different conditions that could be found in vivo in the upper GI tract. In this video, a button battery is submerged in honey, which is a viscous liquid. Even with food resistance, the endomagno holds onto the object, extracts it through the sphincter, which expands and deforms due to the large, bulky size of the button battery, and successfully removes the object with food resistance. We anticipate that endomagno can be reproduced cheaply, around $20, with the most expensive component being the silicone tubing that's used, as well as the 3D printing of the handle. This is considerably cheaper compared to most single-use endoscopy forceps that are around $38. Next is the results for our upper GI endoscopy testing platform. We want our testing platform to closely mimic what endomagno would go through in the body. Therefore, the size and shape are based on the size and shape of the stomach, esophagus, and duodenum, which were themselves based on 3D renderings and images that were found of these structures. The texture is made of silicone rubber to emulate tissue, which is what current models use. We also include sphincters, which are not usually included in current models because that's where our endomagno would likely fail. These are done with a sponge with a cross to add resistance. Here we see the sphincter placement at the upper esophagus, lower esophagus, and the pyloric sphincter at the base of the stomach. You can also see a cross section of the sphincter, which has that sponge with a cross design that I mentioned earlier. The crosses are going to measure two centimeters across, so that way they more closely mimic what a sphincter is like when it's open. Based on our current model using resin, we anticipate that our testing platform will cost about $300. However, for mass production purposes, we anticipate using this to make a silicone mold, which can be more easily mass produced as well as softer, so should function a bit better. This is still really cheap compared to the over $4,000 simulators that are currently on the market. We will now discuss our future directions. We want to emphasize that experts feel that our technology is very good, saying it would be useful during endoscopies and that these cases are common. Future directions to bring our product to market include testing it in a porcine model and having scaled production. We plan to make the endomagno stiffer with an outer coating such as an endoglide sheath with lengths of 5 feet and 8 feet for different types of endoscopes. Finally, we plan to patent and license endomagno to medical device companies and obtain FDA approval based on guidelines for endoscope accessories. We would like to thank our mentors, Dr. Mamula and Dr. Hughes, as well as the BE Lab, Ad Lab, and Biomedical Library at Penn. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation of Endomagno, the Magnetic Endoscopic Retriever. This is Chloe and Jillian, and we're happy to take any questions you have.